Matt Boyle here at CPAC. We are here with uh, former Congresswoman Claudia Tenney. She's running for her old seat in New York's 22nd Congressional Correct. District against yes. one of those Trump district Democrats. This is a district President yeah. Trump won by big yes. numbers. Yes, let me make sure that. all you guys get yeah. this right. This is a Trump district won by a left-wing Democrat masquerading as a moderate. He is not a moderate. There's no, they're, they're not a moderate. Anthony not Brindisi, moderate. not a moderate. So we're at CPAC here, Congresswoman. Uh, very energetic crowd. Uh, yes. Apparently the biggest so crowd CPAC's ever had. Uh, what do you think about the movement here going into the 2020 election and uh, what it means for the top of the ticket in your race in particular? Well, it's very exciting. Let's start right off. I'm so honored to have the endorsement of the President of the United States. Uh, we're really proud to have him. He came into my district in 2018, uh, the first president to visit the city of Utica in 70 years. So it was a real historic moment for our, our community. Uh, I think this year is a new year. It's a turnaround year. Uh, 30,000 less people voted in 16 than 18. And this year has become... The year of, as CPAC is, is calling it, America versus socialism. You know, capitalism versus socialism, however you want it, freedom versus socialism. Socialism is on the rise. I'm from New York State. Socialism has taken over New York State. And the person I'm running against, uh, Anthony Brindisi, has basically rubber stamped all the socialist policies from Albany and has brought that socialist agenda here to New York. He voted and supported Medicare for All four times as a member of the state assembly. He's backpedaling on that, not sure what to do about Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. He also voted four times and co-sponsored the bill for late-term abortion, which is now law in New York, a real terrible bill, way beyond, you know, extreme. And so this is a real great chance for us to take back the seat. He also said he wasn't going to vote to impeach the president, and he did. He voted three times to impeach the president of the United States. And our district is a Trump district, and people are upset about that. He said he was going to go down and work with the president, and he's now busy impeaching the president. And you know why? Because impeachment is a very lucrative business. The Democrats are raising incredible amounts of money impeaching the president. We need to fight back. We need to stand for a freedom agenda, America agenda. And that's what we're doing. And we're going to take this seat back. I'm proud to stand alongside the president, be on the ticket with him coming through. Uh, I think this impeachment is going to be the ball and chain for a lot of Democrats, particularly Democrats in this district, who are against Trump's agenda, seeing how well the tax cuts are, the incredible numbers that we're seeing on the economy, you know, the labor participation rate, the unemployment rates going at, at all-time lows for so many sectors. I mean, this it's really happening in upstate New York as well. It's the first glimmer of hope we've had in our district coming from socialist Albany, and Albany has now been taken over by the Democrats. The New York City Democrats are running everything in Albany, and we are seeing a disastrous result. So it's an exciting year. It's a different kind of year than 2018. I think, I believe, I agree with the Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, we are going to take back the House this year. So now, uh, speaking of uh, Anthony Brindisi's yes. f uh, false per uh, perception that he portrays about yes. himself of being a moderate, he apparently was asked just the other day a really straightforward yes or no question. Let's yeah. pl uh, we'll, we want to play that clip and then we're going to come back. We're going to show you how uh, he did not actually answer the question. Uh, and then we're going to come back and ask you the same question. There's a baby in the womb. There's a human. Uh, look, look I, I think I'm going to leave that to, to the scientists to decide that. So as you can see, Anthony Brindisi didn't answer yes or no whether a baby in the womb is a human being. Now, Congresswoman, can we ask you the same question? Is a baby in the womb a human being? Absolutely. A baby in the womb is most definitely a human being. And I am a very pro-life, uh, always been pro-life, and I have the endorsement of the pro-life groups, including the SBA List, a great group here in Washington and throughout the nation that is fighting for the rights of the unborn. So, yeah, it's scary, though, when you see the first question that was asked, actually asked, the, the, the questioner said, yes or no answer, and he said, oh, that's a hard question for a politician. He labels himself a politician. But let me give it, I want to give your listeners a guide about, listen, when you see politicians out there talking like, I'm bipartisan, well, that's a buzzword. Everybody's bipartisan in Washington. That's what a lot of the media doesn't want you to know. They also say things like, I'm deliberate, deliberative. I'm thoughtful, as if to make it seem like they're moderate. And then they go and vote for very far left, uh, far left wing uh, initiatives. Anthony Brindisi is a great little score called the 538 score. It's, it's tracking members of Congress in the age of Trump and how they vote. 100% means you vote 100% of the time with Trump. Anthony Brindisi is now scoring in a little over eight, eight out of 100. Let's compare that to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the famous self-proclaimed socialist campaigning with Bernie Sanders. Luckily, she's not old enough to be the vice presidential candidate. 
she is like a 14, Nancy Pelosi's a 16, even Adam Schiff is in the teens. So when somebody like Anthony Brindisi is trying to, to fool you into thinking that he's somehow a moderate, he may have used moderate he's language. He's more radical he's than AOC and Pelosi and Schiff combined. Exactly. And, yep. and, and it's, this is what's so interesting that the media never really goes after. Moderate language does not transcribe into actually your voting record. And I, I encourage voters, especially some who may or may not like the president's tweets or his personalities, we've got to start judging people on results, on how they vote. And that's going to be the most important thing about this election. We've got to reject socialism. We've got to uh, reject this radical agenda.